Before I get into today's video, there's a little disclaimer here about the Hurricane B-roll footage that I'm using today. That's the video that plays in the background or the foreground while I'm talking. Well, some of it today comes from US government footage. Not all of the footage does come from the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, and it may include footage from other recent hurricanes and natural disasters. This is because of a limited amount of rights cleared footage from Maria. I felt it only fair in the interests of journalistic integrity to let you know, so you didn't think I was passing off one disaster as another. With that said, let's get on with the topic at hand. Nearly two weeks ago, Category 4 Hurricane Maria slammed into the unincorporated US territory of Puerto Rico, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Immediately following the hurricane, the 3.4 million residents of the island struggled to find power, fresh drinking water, and shelter. 12 days later, and things are not much better, with only 45% of the island's population having access to fresh water and 50% of the nation's roads still closed. Indeed, while the slow process of cleaning up is being made, the current US administration is being criticised for its response effort, with a dramatic war of words going on between President Donald Trump and the mayor of Puerto Rico's capital city, San Juan, and several other politicians to boot. But while this all goes on, Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who has personally donated a quarter million dollars to aid efforts in Puerto Rico, has done something that you might have not even heard about that will not only impact the island nation in the coming months, but also in the coming years. He's sent hundreds of Tesla Powerwalls to Puerto Rico, where teams of Tesla engineers will collect them to existing solar panel systems to not only give residents power as quickly as possible, but also to ensure that they have a way of storing power even if the island's electrical grid lies in ruins at a time where Puerto Rico is getting far less aid than it needs. Sending power walls instead of food and water may seem counterintuitive, but in doing so, Tesla's charitable act could change the face of the island's power grid forever and influence the way we respond to and prepare for disasters from now on. Of course, at the base level, Tesla gets to benefit from the kudos of helping Puerto Ricans get their power back, bypassing a power grid which was already struggling before the hurricane, and decentralizing energy generation and storage in the process. But on a whole different level, Puerto Rico, if allowed, could also be the thing that allows Tesla to prove that the future of the electrical power system lies in distributed redundancy, solar power, and battery backup systems. A blank slate on which such a power grid could be built with far less hassle than trying to integrate new and old. I'll come to what that could mean for Tesla in a second, but first let's examine what this does all mean for Puerto Rico. As The Hill reported yesterday, the island has long been trying to meet a renewable portfolio of energy that requires 12% of all energy on its electrical grid to come from renewable energy. But at the time Maria hit, just 2% of all of the island's energy came from renewables. Worse still, a study back in 2014 by Siemens Energy concluded that the island's grid was just too old and unreliable to accept more than about 580 megawatts of renewable energy into it. In other words, even before Maria hit, Puerto Rico's electrical grid was in such a sorry state, it was hardly enough to make Puerto Rico a shining beacon of future energy use. But that study by Siemens assumed that renewable energy would be integrated into the electrical grid, not built outside of the energy grid, in small microgrid pockets of distributed power. Small microgrid pockets of distributed power, just like the Tesla power walls now being installed across the nation. If Tesla plays its cards right and is allowed to do so, by the local government, Puerto Rico could not only kick its reliance on fossil fuels to the curb, but it could also become a showcase for the future of energy around the world. At the moment the storm hit, Puerto Rico was a nation relying on an old, crumbling electrical infrastructure powered in most part by large amounts of fossil fuel. Imagine a new future where its electrical power is provided by photovoltaic systems, wind turbines, and yes, perhaps even wave generation technologies, all stored in large numbers of static energy products like the Tesla Powerwall or Tesla Powerpack. A nation which, following a catastrophic event like Maria, could switch over to backup power to keep essential power flowing to areas where it was needed, and where power could be generated on site rather than rely on power shipped in via oil tankers. 
in a society with a national grid and bureaucrats jealously guarding the monopoly that grids represent, such a vision would be laughed out of existence or, at the very least, be nigh on impossible to achieve. But in a society desperate for basic power, water and shelter, one desperate to rebrand itself, Tesla's powerful products and decentralized approach to power could actually cost less to implement if carried out appropriately. And if Tesla succeeds in Puerto Rico, it could mean good things for mainland US us too. Earlier this year, Joshua D. Rhodes of the University of Texas at Austin calculated that the US electrical grid, which is in some places as decrepit as Puerto Rico's was pre-Maria, would cost five trillion US dollars to replace, equivalent to around one third of the nation's GDP for one year. Or to put it another way, nearly fifteen and a half thousand dollars for every one of the 323 million people living in the US today. Imagine putting that much investment into a distributed power generation and storage system. So you see, while Elon Musk and Tesla should be applauded for their humanitarian efforts, while politicians argue in the spotlight, Puerto Rico could just be what the world needs to understand how we can clean our grid and work towards a renewable future for everyone. And that, of course, also includes using electricity as fuel for transport. Don't you agree? And before I go, if you'd like to donate to the relief efforts yourself, the Hispanic Federation is currently donating 100% of all donations it gets to the Puerto Relief effort. You can also donate to UNICEF, One America and Save the Children, all of which are collecting for relief efforts in Puerto Rico. That's it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded and click the link at the end of this video or in the description below if you want to help me make more of these videos. Until next time, keep evolving.